Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for June 23rd, 2020, recorded on 4.14 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, once again, our unmanned camera system project is coming together nicely, and we're almost out of the testing phase, believe it or not. We got most of the quirks uh, sorted out uh, during the, the last couple of days. Again, this ca camera project system is expected to capture all the raw fury and power of these tropical cyclones and intense hurricanes as they make landfall along the coastlines. We're going to be putting them out there to, and, and giving everyone a live view, live feed, not behind a paywall or anything. So if you guys do want to go check out what we're doing in this product and everything else, make sure to go follow me here on YouTube first and foremost, but also on Twitter at micromally one That's R-E-M-A-L-A-Y and the number one. Make sure to go follow me there and check out what we're doing here with these camera system projects that are expected to capture all the raw fearing power of tropical cyclones as they make landfall along the coastlines. Now taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated as of yesterday, we continue to notice the very quick demise of any sort of warming out here in the ENSO uh, areas. Again, we continue to head towards a La Nina phase that is likely heading uh, is likely going to occur here as we head into the latter half of fall and into uh, winter of 2020 and then eventually into 2021. This is likely going to continue to persist and only amplify as time goes on. Meanwhile, out here in the Atlantic Main Development Region, conditions continue to be warm above the long-term average despite this very significant Saharan air outbreak. Again, we've seen that Saharan air now move all the way through the Lesser Antilles, now approaching uh, the southern Florida area, and then eventually all the way up in the Gulf Coast and the Northeast and the Midwestern United States. We'll get some of that over the next coming days or so. If you take a look here at the upper ocean heat content, this is updated as of this morning. Again, once you start getting into these reds and uh, these reds, yellows, oranges, and even greenish colors here, that's your higher upper ocean heat content, your warmer water at depth. That's also the more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere for these tropical cyclones to take advantage of. Again, this area continues to be our most favored. You notice the very intense uh, colors right now in the uh, Caribbean right now, and that is very indicative of that higher upper ocean heat content. That's very indicative of what we're going to be experiencing with any tropical cyclones that take uh, advantage of this could become in particularly intense down in this region, all else favoring. But the third dynamic environment is pretty favorable down in this region uh, to support intense hurricanes along with the Gulf of Mexico. You notice also the main development region is starting to peak northward now. Our intertropical, intertropical convergence zone rather has lifted actually now back towards its climatology, its uh, climatological norm area where it's now sitting about here. That's also to help warm portions of the Atlantic main development region out here in the uh, in the islands out there near the Cabo Verde Islands. So that's certainly something to monitor. Also, you notice out here in the Gulf Stream up here near where uh, Tropical Storm Dolly is. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But once again, our phase two testing is still ongoing. This is our roadmap, if you will, for what's going to be happening over the next coming weeks or so. Again, we're still in our phase two testing, but we're working very nicely. We've actually developed a full on cooling system, a, a coolant system to help uh, cool down our GoPro camera. We, we had had some issues with it overheating and we developed our cool, excuse me, our own cooling system rather that's going to be helping to mitigate uh, the warming of our camera. We tested it out today. It worked beautifully as expected. Our next phase, our next stop will be phase three operational and that will be heading towards uh, putting this out in front of tropical cyclones as they make landfall. And speaking of that, the, not tropical cyclone related, but this is what our GoPro camera captured last night. We were doing a time lapse and we did manage to get a still photography of lightning uh, that was generated by sea breeze thunderstorms down here in Florida. This happens almost every summer. And uh, again, every day in the summer we get these. You notice that big lightning strike out there. We happen to get during a tornado worn storm. You get, get these little sea breeze and mesoscale boundaries uh, that help to create and, and induce spin in the atmosphere. This was a likely a land spout tornado that did form uh, here just to the south of Orlando, Florida. But again, uh, we did have some lightning associated with that. And that's one of the still uh, still uh, photos that we managed to get of that. So very interesting things. If you guys do want to go follow me and support me on what I'm doing, make sure to go follow me on YouTube here and also on Twitter at micromally one as well. 
Now, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperatures, this was updated at 7 o'clock this morning from tropicaltidbits.com. Again, you notice this 26.5 degrees Celsius isotherm basically now approaching the western or the, I'm sorry, the eastern portions of the Atlantic Basin. The main development region is warming up quite nicely. Water temperatures here in the Caribbean running about 29, 30 Celsius, running about 30 Celsius out here in the southeastern Pacific Basin as well. Overall, this area in this part of the world is going to become more favorable as time goes on over the next two to three weeks. There's going to be a favorability period, first starting off in the Eastern Pacific Basin, then moving into the Western Atlantic Basin. We have a lot to talk about there regarding that. First of all, first step here is looking here at subtropical storm, or tropical storm Dolly rather, which is sitting out here. Nice convective band that's been able to form around the center. It's become fully tropical during the day today. And it's now moving off towards the northeast here. It's moving away from that warmer Gulf Stream waters that it's in right now. Expected to become a remnant low here by tomorrow. You also notice this big Saharan air plume, that Saharan air edge now uh, extending all the way into Cuba and now getting it, getting ready to shape up and heading into Florida. If you have any respiratory problems here in the southeast, mid, uh, midwestern states, or the northeast here over the next several days, make sure to wear a mask. You should be wearing one anyway. However, of course, make sure you're wearing a mask regarding that as well. And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we do have a lot of convective activity. You notice one big system out here, another out here, another out here, and another beginning to form out here. Multiple systems, first starting here with Tropical Storm Dolly. Again, this is expected to move out here. No real big concern for land at this time. And again, that's just the uh, ASCAP uh, past the scatterometer uh, wind pattern uh, that was measured by satellite. Uh, this again showed the pattern of that 40, uh, that about 40 knot wind uh, or so, which equivalents to about 45 miles per hour. And that was representative in this area right through here. And we also notice here out in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we also do have a lot of stuff going on here, which is going to be occurring over the next coming days or so. We're first beginning really with our system out here with a 60% chance of development here over the next few days or so, as it moves generally off towards the west and northwest here. We have another system with a 50-50 shot of developing over the next five days as this generally heads off towards the north and west. We have another system out here with an 80% chance of development as this moves off towards the west northwest these two systems back here are going to be of greatest interest and concern to portions of Central America, Mexico, in the Cabo San Lucas resort areas. As a high pressure dome sets up across here, a ridging of low pressure is begin to, or a troughiness of low pressure rather, is going to be setting up here across portions of the central United States, setting up this big heat dome that might support one or two systems to get tugged off towards the north here. So again, over the next few days or so, Cabo San Lucas resort areas, the Baja of California, uh, portions of Mexico and Central America need to be paying, paying close attention to the uh, progress of these two systems out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin as we go on throughout the next few days. This comes from Ben Knoll Weather here over in the United Kingdom. Once again, this is looking at the European 200 velocity potential anomaly uh, map here for September of 2020. You notice this big sinking area over here. And again, you notice this positive signature over here with more convective activity over portions of Africa and the Western Pacific basins that will typically favor portions of the Atlantic to uh, become very active as we go on through the rest of the season or so. And once again, this is just taking a look at what we're also able to do. This is taking a look at yesterday's weather roundup in the evening, running to about 11.55 in the evening. And this is coming directly off of our weather station. This is not just basically uh, going back and looking at the data. This is actually the weather station plotting this data in an Excel file format using Python to code some of this stuff up. So again, this is some really amazing stuff that we've been able to do. So again, make sure to go subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter for what we're going to be doing here in the future. Now, taking a look here at the 12Z uh, GFS forecast model, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. With the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground here, taking a look from tropicaltippets.com. Again, as we go on throughout time, you notice how tropical systems and, and cyclones begin to form out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Again, 
eventually the favorability, the window of favorability begins to shut on the Eastern Pacific and then moves out into the Atlantic Basin. And that's what most of the models have been indicating. This is the 12Z European forecast model. Once again, showing that uh, progress of our convectively coupled Kelvin wave eventually moving its way into the basin here of the Atlantic. And again, as we go on, this is just a 12Z GFS. Again, our main threats, our main two concerns are going to be storms that form closer to land right now. Again, any storms that form out in this area are not going to have a chance to be pulled back off towards the north and east here. But we do have to watch out as these two systems begin to interact here. Again, this is our big high pressure dome here across the southeast and uh, central United States. And then eventually we're going to get this trough of low pressure that develops out here. And again, in between the weakness right here, there's a weakness in the trough and the high pressure right there. And these systems might eventually want to recurve back. So there is the potential for some land concern here as we go on through the, the next 10 days or so, in the next five to 10 days across portions of Central America, the Baja of California certainly has the potential for some land interaction there. Again, it is too soon to determine where storms might form, where they might go. But again, the general consensus right now is that these will stay away from land and be of no significant concern. However, obviously it is the hurricane season for everybody and everybody should be paying attention. So again, if you live right now along the Baja of California, Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, again, through Central America and portions of Mexico, just be paying attention as you should. It is the hurricane season. Just be paying attention as you should for the remainder because there is one or two systems that we might have to watch here going forward over the next coming days or so. No significant land threats at this time. Again, all else in the, the uh, deep tropics right now is quiet, but again, the overall signal is for a very busy Atlantic hurricane season. Other than that, we only have Tropical Storm Dolly, which is moving away from land. No significant concerns at this time. Really not, not even a swell producer as well. Only maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. But again, we'll continue to watch in here over the next several days or so. Again, make sure to go follow me here on Twitter at MicroMally1 with these camera system projects that we're doing to capture all the raw fury and power of hurricanes as they make landfall along the coast being brought to you guys live. And again, we're trying to do some really amazing things for you guys. If you guys do want to go support, make sure to go follow me. Make sure to go subscribe and everything else. Well, with that being said, I'm going to leave you guys with some time-lapse footage that I recorded earlier this afternoon. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone.